So uh, fast forward, when do you think uh, vaccines are at a point where where people no longer have to wear masks anymore? Yeah, that's hard to say. Um, it depends on how the vaccine rollout continues and how many can get it in their arms and how many are willing to do it. Right. I mean, we may see a, a case where you have 50 percent compliance. And uh, in that case, it will make a significant difference in the numbers. And I think you'll start to see that. I think the worst is ahead of us, by the way. I personally feel that we're going to see numbers continue to rise and significantly more deaths before this is uh, before we can put a bow on this thing, because people are becoming more loose and more pandemic fatigued, more uh, less careful. Uh, as time goes on, and I see it all the time. Um, so um, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I think you're going to have to have probably at least 50% vaccine compliance or uh, maybe 50 60% of vaccine compliance plus illness in order, you know, in order to have installed the antibody uh, through uh, the disease, even though the vaccine is a much stronger antibody response than to have had the illness itself. I, uh, I, on your coronavirus fatigue, I think that is definitely true. And I think that's true across a bunch of different domains. Like how do people interact with one another? How are they doing education? How are they? But one of the things that I found is that the information is so crappy right now. Like if you go to get on um, YouTube and you want to find out about coronavirus, it's awful, man. It's terrible. There's it's, I, I, I was trying to do that before our conversation today. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that uh, I think there's a bigger cost right now to the self-censorship that's going on because people don't want to talk about vaccines because they may lose their ability to participate in the in the uh, town hall, even when all they're doing is saying like, hey, I just want to understand this. And I think that there is a chilling impact going on right now around uh, speech and dialogue and rhetoric because of people saying, well, we could get past this faster if we just kick out all the information that doesn't agree with the standard narrative. Yeah, but we've, we've seen that for years. I mean, you know, you know that drill. How many times have I been banned from, uh, from groups online for discussing the science, you know, and, 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 and you know, in, in that, in that parlance, I guess it was detrimental because folks didn't get to hear the correct synthesis of the science. But I, it, I think there's a fine line to walk here. If we're allowing disinformation into the public square, are we really doing things a disservice? It's not a fair fight. It's not having an honest conversation. It's forcing the reader and the listener to sort through uh, bad information to then try to figure out if they can trust the other information. And that's a tough putt during a contagious pandemic that has profound uh, human and economic in, in, uh, impacts. So I, I kind of have a little bit of trouble with with I kind of support the idea of removing false information. I mean, I, and, and downplaying false information, but I encourage people to participate in the conversation. And you know, I don't know that are those folks really being censored who are just asking questions or what's going on with that? Do you think that uh, it would be worthwhile for Google to take this down? No, I don't think so at all. Interesting. So we'll see how that goes. I, uh, I, I definitely know by touching this that you run that risk, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Cause I think, I've got the I've got a scientist that's totally on board with things, and he's, he's well, talking uh, about these. Uh, yeah, but I, I I don't imagine that that it's that the, the censor or I shouldn't say censoring that filtering information is is really that gone that far. Uh, there are people who have made absolutely abject false claims that can hurt people, and I and I'm curious if Google wants to be complicit in that if it comes to pass. You know, there's there, there's a weird legal edge we have never explored. We'll see, man. I got a couple people coming up on the podcast that have been booted off uh, and some oh, of them um, that are from places like the Santa Fe Institute, which I would say is no bastion of right wing, you know, no. uh, uh, the theories and alt right ideas. So, Kevin, final question before we wrap up. Uh, there's a lot of talk right now about people saying, hey, I got the vaccine. I don't have to wear the mask now. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, two things. You have to continue to wear it because getting a vaccine in your arm doesn't magically flip a switch and make you immune. Uh, you have to raise the antibody. It takes uh, two weeks at least, uh, some even say 28 days or longer uh, to, hit, to hit a maximum of the primary antibody response. You then get the booster, at least with uh, Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, that then drives that up higher. So then you are fully, well, you're 95% by the numbers 
um, probably higher, um, unlikely to receive to get the uh, to be to get sick if you catch the virus. However, there's a difference between sterilizing immunity and non-sterilizing. Ah, oh, this you're this is bullshit. You're gonna tell me that I, that if we get vaccinated, everybody's still got to wear the mask because you can still be so you could be infected and have and the the vaccine will protect you from the virus but the virus is still there and you're still shedding virus. So it would mean that you would still, and at least that's understanding right now, we may find that that's not true. And that may be figured out in you know, next week. And they may say, sure, once you've hit, once you have been vaccinated, take the damn thing off and have at it. Um, the problem with that is that, um, is that you change, you now make it possible for folks to do it out of convenience rather than responsibility. And you say, well, I'm just going to say I got vaccinated. I'm not going to wear the thing. You know, a lot of people don't like wearing it because they, you know, just don't for different reasons. Um, for the very reason that we talked about in the very beginning of this, which is 70 percent of communication comes from emotional or from, uh, from yeah. visual, right? Like, yeah. so if there's a reason, maybe they don't want 70 percent of their communication cut off. Well, it's not really it's, it's not covering 70 percent of your <laughs> body. <laughs> and what's really been fun is it's like I still I, and I pay attention to this stuff. I, I see people, I, I, I see the eyes, I see other elements of their expressions. I recognize people perfectly fine because I always, because of the context they're in more than anything else, I'm sure. But it never has been, never has been an issue for me. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.